Our friend John here was a student uh, last year, trained for, for several months, earned his first strike, and uh, in October, kind of fell out of training for a little while, and then yesterday sent an email to me about an incident that happened when? Last night. Tell us about it, about exactly what happened, starting from where you were. Okay, I was on uh, La Cienega in Venice, and I'm six cars back from the light, and I'm just sitting there waiting for light change, light change, nothing happened, everybody's honking their horns, like, what's going on? And I look up, like all the way at the front, and there's a guy attacking a girl in the front seat of the drivers. In the front of this lane, right, all the way up, all the way up, and they're, uh, and he's, the door's open, she's here, and the door's open, and he's doing this, and choking her, and she's turning around and kicking she's him out. out of the car, out of the car, and he just keeps coming back, and so, I, I want to say I didn't think, but I did think. I was like, right. should I do this, should I do this? Right. I jumped out of the car and just went after right. questioning it. And I went, and, uh, and at this point, you don't know who they are. Who's no clue. Got it. So I'm about halfway to the you to, to him from the back of the car. I go, ma'am, are you okay? And she goes, no, he's drunk, he's attacking me. And I said, dude, I threw down the ground, kind of based up. Yeah. And I was like, are you okay? To the woman. To the woman. And, and then I'm still flipping out. He's flipping out. And this guy came out from his car, saw that I was helping, and he basically held him down. I was like, we need to move these cars and I need to move them. Get out of the traffic. Right, I said, let me, you hold him down and I'll, I'll move my car real quick and then I'll come back and I'll move him. Because I, I didn't know if that guy could move him or not. Right. So he, I knew that he had him and the girl was under age and she wasn't a driver. I see, so she couldn't move that she car. She couldn't move that car. So I came back, I grabbed, I, I let the guy let go of him. He's right? holding him, you get up. Oh, after you, after you move your car. After right? I moved my car, it took me two seconds. Got it, then you came back to the guy. You came got back to the guy. Got... And I, I basically isolated the arm here Piece underneath, I grab this wrist, we both got up together, and I make sure I have the base. And then I, I led him off to the, an empty lot that was right next to the- Out of the street? Out of the street. Cool, so you still have control of him at that point? I do. And then what happens to the other people? What are they doing? Uh, they're moving their cars. Got it, so cars are cool. Yeah. You're holding this guy. I'm holding this guy. And then the woman and eventually the woman, comes? She shows up, and she's right in front of him, and to protect her, because I don't know what's she's going on. She's over here, right. Right, I don't know who they are. So I come right up. And I'm holding him, uh huh, right? And he's trying to, he's trying to attack her at this point. He's trying to get at her right here. And then he goes to me because we're talking about calling police. Right. So we gotta call police. There's a lot of blood, by the way. Interesting. Uh, his his or hers? His. Interesting. So he was all over the place. He tries to loosen this arm out, right? And I grab this and I go, oh, duck under to the back. Okay. <laughs> and then what? I, I drop my butt to the ground and I lock my feet. And honestly, you told me earlier that she crossed her legs. But him legs well, yeah, his impulse in this situation, and UFC fighters do it all the time, his impulse was to cross his feet. So from here, so you guys can learn today that the reason we don't cross our feet is because they can walk over and break your ankle right here. Fortunately, this drunk crazy guy didn't do jujitsu. So let's go back to the point. So we're here. So then what? So he was fighting, and I would, I'd be in this until he'd calm down, and then I'd be like, let's sit up. And I'd uncross my feet, and he'd sit up, and then he'd calm down, and I'd just give him a bear hug and hold on to him. I'd be like, dude, it's okay, you can relax. Just relax, and he's cursing at me <laughs> at this point. He doesn't know what he's doing, and uh, the poor girl, she's all frantic and everything. At what point do you find out who she is to him? When they're talking to each other. And then, well, who is she? She's his sister. It's his sister oh. uh, that he's punching in the car. And he was intoxicated he was under the influence. He'd been drunk for days. Sure. So, so we're here, he's belligerent. Then what? So at this point, uh, it would, I would switch between the rear naked, and I'd switch between a bare hood. At one point, I even had, even had this hand Underneath there. Dude! That's from the Master Cycle. You've never been to Master Cycle. Never been to Master Cycle. <laughs> but I watched the video. YouTube, bro. <laughs> keep going. So I was here, and then he would pass out. That's interesting. So when he passed out, and we, I guess, do you think the pass out was more from the choke? No. Or because he was just drunk and crazy. He was drunk out of his mind. He would go to sleep. I had him in a bear hug at one point, and he'd choke. He passed out. out. I okay. see. So I'd roll him over, right? And I just, I'd maintain that I was on his back. I'd listen for his heartbeat, mm -hmm. make sure he's breathing. But you never know. Maybe tap on the face a little bit. Right. Right? Sorry. <laughs> and then uh, and then he would wake up and start picking out and I would go back to this. And we'd roll back over. And I did this for 30 minutes. No way! <laughs> so this, at this point, back and forth, back and forth, the cops are being called by someone. Multiple times. Got it. Yeah, because we saw, we saw paramedics go by, but they're on other calls. Police have other jobs to deal with. Sure. And we were on the list. So we waited patiently. Myself, the guy that's helping me. So you just controlled this guy until the cops get there. When they got there, they took over. They took over. I mean, they saw that I had control of sure. him and I wasn't harming him. I was being very gentle with him, in fact. Right. And uh, they came over and I said, Are you ready to take him? And they pulled the handcuff out and hit his wrist. They with locked it him up. And pulled him up and then they thanked me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. But I gotta say, one of the things he, he complained about was my pressure on his hips. 
He could play. He was saying. <laughs> I was applying too much pressure on his head. Like, while you're fighting him, he was saying what? He's like, dude, I get off my hips! <laughs> get off my hips! And I'm like, no, 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 it's jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> so at this point, so uh, John has been out since October, has not trained, right. and this happened what two days ago, three days ago? This happened yesterday, last night. He emailed me last night, so this yeah. happened yesterday, and for me. You know, several things are like just mind blowing and amazing from this. Uh, number one is his ability to, regardless of perfect technique, understand the principles there, which was what? All the way in, all the way out, stay close. He had these amazing forearm grips and wrist grabs, and then the guy swings and he ducks under, gets a rear clinch. So just understanding where in the fight are the safest places to be, it sounds like he was able to supply those concepts. I want to be right here because he can't hurt me if I'm right here. And he applied those effectively. And I just feel like, just based on what you demonstrated, that there was such a concern to not hurt the guy, but to immobilize, especially knowing that this guy isn't even in his right state of mind. Right. To do this and not actually hurt the guy and be concerned about that, and listen for a heartbeat, make sure he's still alive under you, even though he's passed out from being under the influence, make sure he's still alive and okay, no brutalizing his face, none of that. And, and most courageous of all is to intervene yourself in a situation where the other six cars in front of you, what were they doing? Four lanes. 20 cars each. Watching, cameras out, yeah. you know, observing the situation. Yeah. The horns. So this is beautiful because some people say, well, I don't want to do jujitsu because I'm not picking fights, fights don't fight, I don't do fights. Don't. And what I realized, and this is a great reminder of this, is that the most likely chance that any of you guys get to into a physical altercation is to protect someone else who's in a situation that just stumbled upon them and happened, whether you know them or not. The question is, should you help someone who's getting beat up in a situation where they could potentially be killed if you don't know either one of them, you know? And, you know, he followed his instinct. He did what he had to do. Unfortunately, it worked out okay. Not every situation is the same, but, um, you know, incredible uh, retention of principles, which I love 100% from combatants here, and the courage that you can't, you can't teach that courage to say, no, no, I see a problem, think twice, and then go for it 100%, you know? So in recognition of that, Besides being excited that John is back to training, because that did motivate you, did it not? Yes, I'm, I'm a lifer now. Yeah, he's gonna act <laughs> So no more time off. I wanted to award him with a new gi for his new beginning of his wow. career here. <laughs>